Well, here is somebody who says, "Mm mm-mm, they're no longer trapped in the closet. This is somebody who actually is very well familiar with R. Kelly, and she's going to tell us how she knows him. She has a book, and it is called No Longer Trapped in the Closet. She's the author and advocate Please welcome Asante McGee is here. Hi, hey, good morning. Hey, good in the morning. building. What's morning. up? Good morning. Good morning. Okay, Asante, you have a you have a book, and um, you have a book, and it's called No Longer Trapped in the Closet. First of all, tell everybody uh, about you and uh, your relationship to R. Kelly. Um, I dated Rob for a little over two years. In the first beginning of the two years, I was considered what you call a fly in, meaning that I was able to come and go as I pleased. Um, it was not until he moved me into his house the summer of 2016 when I actually considered trapped. And when I say trapped, I was not held captive. I was mentally trapped. Mm. Okay. So can I ask you a question? How old were you when you guys first met and how, how did you meet? Um, I was 35 years old and he had a promo tour for the Black Panties Tour in Atlanta. It was a four-day weekend. So I actually met someone from the entourage and later he into, uh, someone from the entourage introduced me to him and then I was invited back to hang out with them the Jan- January of 2014, the following year. Okay. So hold on a second. Let, let me, let's back up just a little bit and let everybody know. You did appear on Surviving R. Kelly. I did. You were, you were there on it. Who contacted you to to do that, and why did you feel, you know, why did you do it? Well, in the beginning, I didn't think this is where we'll be at today. Um, When I left the house, I had to gather my thoughts, and after being involved with him and witnessing the things that he's done to me and the other girls that was there, um, I felt I needed to contact those parents. Mm. So I did whatever I could to contact those parents, and when I contacted them, I let them know what was going on, but I did not reveal my identity to them because I wasn't sure if they was aware of it and, you know, if they would go back and tell. What was going on in this house? You're saying it because I'm trying to understand. First of all, where is the house? How big is it? How many rooms, first of all? Um, the house was located in Johns Creek, Georgia. Okay. Um, the house was, I want to say, about seven bedrooms. And each girl, do you guys all share a room or you guys all have yeah. your own room? We all had our own room. Now, at the time, it was only me and two other girls. In the house? Mm-hmm. In the house. Were you guys all considered his girlfriend? Yes. One of them was the trainer. And then the other girl trainer. was, yes. Trainer. Trainer. She, had, oh, she like had a she position? Tra- like she trained you guys or she was his personal or, trainer? No, personal no, no. Trainer. She trained us how to please him. Oh, Sexually. Got okay. you. So hold up. Wait, wait, wait. So you come into this house, you're introduced to another girl, and it's saying this is also his girlfriend. And then this, you're introduced to a woman that says, we're going to train you how to please R. Kelly. Mm. And you were like... Okay. It didn't go exactly like that. He actually introduced me to the trainer April of that year prior to him moving me to the house. Well, Because you were flying back and forth right. to see him. Because yes. you got Did promoted you... from the fly into the... The main girl. So the when you were live-in. Live-in. Okay. Yes. When you were flying... By the way, everybody, we are talking to Asante McGee, and she has a book. This is your book, right? Yes. No Longer Trapped in the Closet. You also saw her on the Lifetime Television documentary, Surviving R. Kelly. When you were flying in, did you think you were the only one, though, when you no, were flying No, he in? was honest with me. And the reason why I accept that, because I was in a, marriage, a marital uh, abusive. My ex-husband was abusive, abusive. to me. Mm-hmm. He cheated on me, had a baby on me, different things like that. So when Rod was honest with me in the beginning, I respected that because my ex-husband was not. Um, so, you know, because of who he was, I would have been a fool to not believe that, I, you know, I was the only girl. So right. in the beginning, everything's voluntary. Like you go there on your yes. own and you're you're now being promoted. You're being trained how to satisfy him and everything like that. When does it become this whole thing where you're saying you're trapped mentally? Um, By the first week, even the second week. By the second week, I was trying to figure out how I was going to leave that house. Why? It was too much Um, from rules. If you wanted to. He's telling you welcome home, but how is this my home if I can't walk freely in this house? You can't walk. Yeah, where can't you go? Like, give okay, us the rules. So say if I'm, if I want to come out my room, mm-hmm. I have to first text him or call him and say, "Daddy, can I come out my room?" Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> hey, hold on. And, and the trainer taught you these rules. Well, he told me these rules, right. and then the trainer, you know, if I, if she saw I did something wrong, she'd be like, "Oh no, you can't do this. You have to do that." But mm. for the trainer, she was more there sexually than anything. Okay, so then the rule, first rule was you had to text him. Daddy, can Daddy, I? Daddy, can I come out the room? And what else? What and, was another rule? Um, if he did not respond, then I had to come out my room and literally stomp until someone heard me to come downstairs. What do you mean stomp? Like n- literally knock uh, 
like stomp on the floor yeah, with your feet, like just stomp. Someone acknowledge me to come downstairs. Wow. Okay. Oh, I, I, so how long did you date? You said 2016. You met him? No, I met him originally in two, 2013, but we have, we started seeing each... I met him officially 2014, January, mm-hmm. and which I was formally introduced. Okay. And that's when he gave me his number. And then we had our first sexual relationship February 2014. Oh. So is the, is the hype, because a lot of people were asked, because you said you were 35 when you met him, a lot of people want to know, knowing his reputation and knowing that he has multiple women, why would you do this? Is it the hype of it's R. Kelly? Like what is what is it about you you allowing yourself to be in a situation like this? Is it is he buying you things? Is he you know what I'm saying? And and one thing I can't I mean him being R. Kelly, like I said, I would have been the fool to think that I was the only person he was seeing. So I respected his honesty. So yes, he was buying me things. I mean, it was it was like a normal relationship. I never saw the other girls until moved I moved into, into the house. Even before then, I guess he started introducing me to them. They knew me, but I didn't know them. Ah, uh, I mean, so but you, you know, and, and in defense of you, I understand what you were saying because you said, listen, I was in an abusive relationship. I was in a relationship with a man had a child on me. So again, you're probably feeling a certain kind of way, and him showing attention. He's a big time superstar and everything else. You were probably a little vulnerable right right then and there, right? Yes. So. So after that, now you meet him, and then you go to you move to this house with him. So you met him in 2014. How long were you there? When did you finally leave? Um, I moved. He moved me into the house the end of May of 2016, mm-hmm. and I left the middle, like the second week of June. So it was that Wednesday before Father's Day of 2016. Oh, so you were just there for a few months? Well, no, I was. I lived in the house for three weeks. Oh. And see, that's where a lot of people get the confusion. They think that I, do, do, throughout our relationship, he abused me. He did not. He did have his control and things, but it wasn't nothing that I felt that was too crazy. You know, texting my whereabouts, let him know when I'm at the airport, different things like that. Mm-hmm. I felt that, you know, it was for my safety. Ah. So that's the difference, and that's why I get I receive a lot of backlash, because, you know, they're thinking that I said that I was with him for the whole time, and he abused me, and that's why, you know... But that's not the case. That's not the case. No. So when you decided to leave, you just left. It was not that easy now. Um, originally, when I was going to leave, he had a show in New Orleans for Father's Day. Right. So I was going to have somebody come and get me there and never return. But I actually got into an um, a altercation with the trainer. And it was like a huge... With the sexual trainer. Yes, mm-hmm. with the sexual trainer. And one of his assistants was like, Mr. Kelly, Mr. Kelly, Asante and so-and-so about to get into a fight. So, you know, he called me asking what was going on, and I told him, and he told me I had a black woman syndrome, mm-hmm. that I didn't like another woman to tell me what to do, especially a younger woman. Mm. And, you know, I'm explaining, well, she talks to you crazy, blah, blah, blah. She was a female R. Kelly. Mm. And what does that mean? Meaning that she's just abusive as he is. With just verbally. Con- verbally. And controlling yes. like this. Yes. How old was she? Um, at the time, she was like 32. And is she still with him? Do you know? I'm not sure. I, I don't know, you know, recently if she's still with him, but I know when I left that she was still there. And how old was the third lady that was there? Um, the third lady, she had turned, she was 18 years old. Oh my and God, I she remember, just turned 18? I have, I remember seeing her the year before that mm-hmm. summer and she was 17 years old. So let's talk about that, Asante. We're talking to Asante McGee, everybody, who actually lived with R. Kelly in the house with, what, you said two other women? hmm The young girls, you know, you said you met him, you were 35, mm-hmm. right? So he, so clearly he, he's going, well, he said that in an interview with Gail. I'm like, I'm all, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but here's the thing. Did you see a lot of young girls? No, and see, because like I said, when I was just flying back and forth, I really did not see uh, young girls. I, this And it's crazy because when I moved into the house, I remember seeing this girl twice prior to me moving in. And when I first you saw her, the first time I saw her, which was in Connecticut, he had like two concerts in Connecticut uh-huh. and in New Jersey. Okay. And at that time, I thought she looked re- really young, but I'm like, okay, maybe she just looked younger for her age. She was sitting on his lap. Mm. And so then I saw him a few, I saw her earlier I think later on in Oklahoma at another concert. And was she sitting on his lap again? No, she was asked because he told me to come into his dressing room, but her back was facing me and she, he was rubbing on her butt. So mm. I was confused. And she's still a young girl. You're looking at this. Well, yeah. 17. She, yeah. And so, you know, and I was confused. And he was like, give daddy a kiss. And, you know, I was just like, okay, what is going on? So it was like everything was normal. Is so the, I guess that's when he was just molding me to meeting the other girls. But he didn't formally introduce me to her then. So, Asante, is that young girl, is that the one whose parents are looking for her now? Is yes. it Which one? It's Azrael. Okay. Who was just on the interview on Friday 
with Gail King. And yes. she's saying that her parents just want the money. No. That's not the situation. And I contacted the parents. And when I contacted both parents and I told them what, you know, he's done to me and what I've witnessed their kids do, I, was, I felt that they did not know and they were not okay with it. What have you okay. witnessed their kids do? Um, as far as um, Azarel, I witnessed her perform fellatio mm-hmm. in front of me, his uh, 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 one of his assistants, mm-hmm. and the trainer. Mm-hmm. And we were just all in a cigar room, and I just started hearing moaning and stuff, and I looked up, and everybody just seemed like it was normal, mm-hmm. and no one was bothered. And I'm like, you know, I have a, a teenager, and there's no way I would be comfortable with, you know, somebody watching my teenage do this to any Wait, wait, wait. You have a teenage daughter? Mm-hmm. So while you were living away with him, somebody obviously was caring for well, you. Well, this was the summertime. And so that's where a lot of people think that I left my kids unattended. No. When I was dating him and was traveling back and forth, they were well attended, not by my teenage daughter, uh, with a close friend that I've known for 10 years, and also family members. Okay. So this Listen, was the summer. And you live with R. Kelly for three weeks. Yes. In the house with two other women. A big house. Yes. Who cleaned this house, by the way? Like, who, <laughs> Did he who, who cooked up? and cleaned in this house? Yeah, did the no trainer have, a, yeah. have that activity? Nobody cooked. What Nobody y'all cooked. What y'all eat? Takeout. Whenever, when we did get takeout. He would, who would buy this takeout? Did, um, like, his assistant or somebody would go get food for all of us. Wait, wait, okay. wait. You said when we did get takeout. So are you saying that... We y'all... would go all day without eating. What? We did not. I mean, it's not like... There wasn't anything in the fridge? No, the fridge was empty. If it was something, it was still like expired food. So you're so it is true that he would maybe withhold food from you guys. Was that a form of punishment? I don't know if it was. I know sometimes it will be a form of punishment, but for all of us not to eat, he's the type that I guess because he drinks all day, so he feel like we we shouldn't eat. I'm oh. not sure his mind of you know why he feel like. We shouldn't eat because I brought that to his attention. Like when I first got to the house after like a couple of days. You were like, I'm hungry? Yeah, I was like, Daddy, you don't like to feed us. So first of all, let's talk about Daddy. <laughs> let's talk about Daddy. Yeah, because that came out naturally. Yeah, it did. Like, because that was something yeah. that when we did he, told. When did he tell you to start calling him Daddy? In when you were flying back and forth? In the beginning. Like basically when he gave me his number and we started um, having conversations and stuff, he started <laughs> oh. telling me. You know, to call him. Like, I had said Rob. Mm-hmm. And he was like, no, you uh, call me daddy. And I was like, daddy? So did you have to go to daddy and ask for money, too? D- Diddy, don't call him daddy. I'm no, just, well, listen, she's, she's, in, no. she's getting in character. I am. <laughs> go ahead. Did you have to? Yeah. I mean, anything that I needed, you know, I'll ask him. And then even, like, when I fly in or something like that, he made sure I was taken care of. But you would have, like, how much money would he give all you guys at one time? Or would he? I mean, it could range from a couple of hundreds to maybe, like, a thousand, two thousand, whatever, depending for you to go shopping. Wow. But when you went shopping with each other, mm-hmm. um, if you did go shopping with each other, it was somebody watching to make sure that you spent all of the money because he didn't want you saving up money to, try guess, to right to have a come up. Okay, so wow. let's talk about the sexual trainer too. How did she? How did you know she was a sexual trainer? What did he ever say to you? I need her to teach you how to mm-hmm. play. How did that happen? Um, the kickoff of the buffet tour in St. Louis, April of 2016. You got the date down. Oh, yeah. I remember dates very well, especially when I have traumatic things like that that mm-hmm. happens. Um, so we were actually, after the show, we were on the um, tour bus mm-hmm. having sex for a couple of hours. You and him? Yes. Nobody else? Nobody else. Okay. Um, so this was from about 3, 4 o'clock in the morning to about 7.30 in the morning. Damn. He got on the uh, phone and told somebody to come here. So somebody knocked, and he said, come in. I'm thinking somebody's going to come on the bus, mm-hmm. but they come out the back room. No. She comes out the room butt naked. Oh, my God. He said, B, get on all fours. He told her that? Yes. Okay. And I'm like, what? Somebody was on this bus the whole time. Oh, my God. He said, what's your name? How long have you been with me? And how long has she been there? She said 16 years. Oh, my God. So at the time, how old are you now? I'm 31. Oh. So I'm doing the mat like, am I being punk right now? Like, what? Oh. What? Ne- you know, what's going on? And so he said, good girl, get up. And she sat next to me because on the bus it was like a table. Mm-hmm. And I sat on one end and she sat on the other end. And he was on the sofa across from us. And I was confused, and uh, it seemed natural to do, her. Do you have your clothes on at this point? Yes, I, I had my clothes. He just had a T-shirt on. Okay. And I was really confused. And, and so he said, tell her what I need. Mm-hmm. Is that what he said? He said he um he said that what she's going to do is teach you how to please daddy. And how was that? Did she start? And, yeah, she started. He was, he, uh, she, he'd be like, come and suck on daddy. Oh, okay. And, and she did it right there in front of you. And then no he was, hesitation. And so he would say, this is how I want you to do it. Mm-hmm. The, okay. And don't please don't take this the wrong way. I don't, and, and I don't mean it because I don't know your situation and how everything went. But you're in your thirties, 
you know the situation is crazy from Jump Street. And when you sound shocked that he told a girl to get butt naked and get on his old fours, why were you shocked? Like, this was the environment that you had been built into. It was either up to you to leave or be in this hell. Right, and you're and not she left, seven. Though. You but left you're not after seven. three weeks. But this right. is like before you right. became a living. Right, this before I okay. became. This is, I guess, him molding me to live to move me in. Mm-hmm. So this girl knew who I was and how I knew. He was like, you remember the girl I told you that I may see on a sprinter mm. in Chicago for all those hours. This is her. Mm. And I was like, what? And so, but you, you dealt with it because what you you had fallen in love with him. I take it I was in love with there him. There it is. Okay. I mean, any, I mean, you do crazy things for mm-hmm. love. Mm-hmm. So you were in love with him because he was financially taking care of you. He was pleasing you sexually, and, and it was it was so much of. I loved his personality. He was really this fun loving guy. He was not this devil that I know now. Wow. Mm. So I mean, you know how people when you first meet them, they charm you. You never see any red sign, red flag. So gradually, you know, something would come, and so that was a red flag, and I should have left then. Okay, but I didn't. How did you get out, and how'd you get the money to get out of the house? Um, I already had money. I mean, because when I was flying back and forth, I mean, I was saving my money. I wasn't stupid at all. Okay. Um. So what I did was, I, he didn't know I was leaving. I had a friend that actually worked close to where his house. So I texted her and I went in my room like, hey, are you at work? And she said, yes. I said, look, this is the address. I need you to come and get me now. Mm. She didn't ask me no questions. She came. I told her to pretend like she was Uber. Because security is at the end of the driveway. And that's where a lot of people think we could just freely walk out. Mm-hmm. We cannot. There's a car parked with two armed securities wow. at the end of this driveway. You cannot go in or out. And right. they're aware of how he treats all of you guys. I'm sure they are. Uh-huh. But they're so, not going to speak on So, Diddy, yeah. I have a question. Can, mm-hmm. can we get back like some of these crazy rules in the house? So you said you couldn't leave out of the room without texting him first and mm-hmm. getting permission from Daddy. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't let you guys eat until he said you guys could eat. What were some of the other rules that you learned um, when you first moved even in? Even if you were, in, like, downstairs, you could not walk freely. So say if I want to move from the living room to the kitchen, I had to knock on the wall to wait for someone to say, come in. Mm. So it's not like you could literally just walk freely in the room. One day I walked in the room without knocking because I didn't think anyone was downstairs. I thought everybody was asleep. He was in the corner talking to one of the other ladies. Mm-hmm. And I said, oops, my bad. He said, well, what? He said, this is the reason why I have rules. Suppose I would have been effing a rabbit. Then I would have had to kill you. <laughs> and I'm like, that's what, what he rabbit? said? Yes, a that's rabbit. What he told me. And I thought that was crazy. Like, what does a rabbit have to do with the situation? Mm, <laughs> sexually, he's a little out there, isn't he? Yeah. How out there is he? Because are there guys that get involved in this situation? Does, I've does, never seen guys, but he love animals. I'm what sorry, what? Animals, what? Ain't no. Ain't no. Yes. Oh, he sorry. does. I yes. oh, wow. He likes and, to give it, not receive it. No, he likes to receive it. So he has a toy. Oh, is that yes. one of the things that you guys were trying to do is mm-hmm. with a toy? And for me, I guess he was training me for that, but he was thought inserting it up himself. Oh. And oh, he snap. also liked the middle finger up him. Right. Oh, the middle one. Yeah. How did you, maybe, because I know you probably went through therapy. Oh. How did you just become regular again sexually? Like after you do yeah, something, really. after you go through all that, where you're doing things that are to the I'm, I'm, hundredth power, can you just, do no. you like doing it anymore? I mean, I, I'm not comfortable. It's like right now, even trying to date, I mm-hmm. feel like people have a hidden agenda because even after Rob, I did try to date. Right. He ended up being another Rob. Mm. Instead, instead, instead he, didn't, he don't have a status. Right. Oh, wow. And so it's just like when I mm. meet guys, I'm like, mm, you know, are you down low? You know, you have wow. a hidden agenda. It's a lot of things. So he's, he's messed me up mentally. Right. So, you know, again, everybody, we're talking to Asante McGee. And uh, again, she was on Surviving R. Kelly. And that documentary, and she now has a book called No Longer Trapped in the Closet. And so this thing with, with you know, you and R. Kelly, now you look at it now. When you look back, did he have financial issues? Did you ever see him having any type or talking about financial issues? No. Because he, they're saying he only has $350,000 in the bank. He would carry a Louis book sack full of money. Really? Um, I remember play, before I moved in, I remember uh, playing a game, a whiskey game. Mm-hmm. He would put, like, um... The first round had like eleven hundred dollars on the table, and mm-hmm. then he had money in his pocket. And if you won, you either took the pot or whatever was in the pocket. The second round, he had a whole bunch of money. Mm. You either chose the money in his pocket, not knowing if it's all ones or what or whatever the mm-hmm. pot was. 
And that's it was ninety seven hundred dollars in his wow. pocket. So he right. had money. Okay. Yes. What about this? Did he ever talk about the allegations with him and, and young girls? And, no. and it kept coming back up. He never he ever never, mentioned. He never spoke of any of his past at all. If anything of his past, he told you. You know, he was abused. He had three children. Um, he really wished he could have his children with him, but unfortunately, it's not the way how he wanted. And mm-hmm. then he would fake dry uh, cry. cry. And of course, I believed him. Yeah. Then what about his wife? His ex wife? Did he ever talk about no. her? Because he's ne- he's never mentioned anything the only thing he's mentioned was his kids did he ever have you be sexually active with an underage girl negative that would have Never. not happened the most he's had me do was to disguise my voice as a little girl uh, when what do you mean during like, sex so when, yeah doing sex he would tell me what to do and he would have me to um like like, like oh. sound like a little girl literally and so i would keep disguising my voice until i got at the pitch that he wanted and he'd be like good girl did he ever ask you because you said you have a teenage daughter did he ever say i want to meet your daughter I don't. I and, and now looking back, I think it would have led to that because he did ask me how old my children was because he was like, "Oh wow, we have something in common because I have three kids, two girls and a boy." And so at that time, I didn't think because I didn't. I never saw no underage girls. But now looking back on it, even watching the documentary, I learned things that I didn't know about him, mm-hmm. and it, and I, I felt sick and disgusted. Mm-hmm. Now looking at everything that's going on with R. Kelly. Does he deserve it all? Do you feel bad? Like, what do you, when you're seeing him in these interviews now, what are your thoughts? I don't feel bad for him at all because Mm -hmm. he's put me through so much hell as well as other women. And for him to keep denying it and just want the public to think that he's the R. Kelly that everybody Mm knows. Do you want him locked up or do you think he needs to go have psychiatric help? I believe he needs to be held accountable for his actions, but he definitely needs to get help. Mm-hmm. Because right. without that help, he's still going to continue having the same behavior that he's having. And for me, I've always heard of him being a predator, but it's deeper than him being a predator. It's not so much he prefer younger ones, but he like anyone that he, he can manipulate. Mm. So oh. once he see that, like he knew I loved him. He knew my past. He took advantage of the situation. Got it. Okay. So what do you say to people that say that maybe you're making all of this up just to be able to make money off of a book? I haven't made a dime. I have not. When I contacted those parents, I never expected for it to go where it is now. I only wrote my book because of the backlash that I received. Mm-hmm. And I felt like the world needed to know my background, mm-hmm. how I ended up for him. Abuse right. does not have an age. Mm. Yeah. I mean, what's the difference with you meeting a guy at a corner store and he start beating you or anything? What is the difference? So you telling me I'm trying to bring another black man down. It has nothing to do with trying to bring another black man down. It's about saving women and men because we're all abused. It's not just about being abused by Ori Kelly. I was abused by my ex-husband. Abuse is going to protect abusers. Mm. And, and it, it needs and, to stop. And you also got to tell the different faces of, of abuse, what it looks like. Because yeah, a lot of people yeah. think abuse is just physical and it's not. It's not at all. Where can people get your book? No longer trapped in the closet. When can they get it and where? Uh, it is available now on Amazon.com. Amazon.com. Hmm. If you want to read more about Asante McGee's uh, experience with R. Kelly, it's called No Longer Trapped in the Closet. Make sure you go to Amazon to get the book. Thank you so much for wow, coming thank in. You. Thank you for being thank honest. You very much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for sharing your story. Give it up for Asante McGee, everybody. Yeah. Stevie in the morning.